the other thing I wanted to um, emphasize here is that the ZL, which is the impedance that you will see along any position of this line. So here is the Z at some length L1 away from the load, and here is the Z at some length L2 away from the load. So that impedance, the input impedance, in other words, that you will see, is also not constant. Um, the input impedance, it will always be defined by the voltage at any location over the current at any location, so V by I. And if you look at the V by I, you will find out, uh, based on the expressions we had before, that this is given by this number. Now, uh, this gamma L, which we found before, which as a reminder is ZL minus Z naught over ZL plus Z naught. So this gamma L multiplied by this exponential e to the negative j 2 beta L, a lot of times will be called the reflection coefficient at the line, at any single location of the line, uh, gamma as a function of L. So this is what you will basically see on this equation right here. And similarly, I have exactly the same thing in my denominator. Now, if you simplify this expression with the exponential, you will actually get a really famous expression, which is shown right here, that actually gives you the impedance on this transmission line um, as a function of length. So uh, this expression, again, I would really encourage you to memorize it. It basically gives you the ZL as equal to Z naught which is the characteristic impedance of the line, times ZL, which is the load, plus JZ not tangent beta L. So this tangent beta L basically brings together the phase constant beta as well as the length of the line. And then there is a similar term in the denominator. So to summarize these results here, um, it is really important to remember that the voltage magnitude is not constant along a line. It will periodically change between a minimum value and a maximum value. And that minimum and maximum value will be a direct um, consequence of how much reflected energy we have. And the second main result here is that the transmission line impedance um, is not constant. Um, at L is equal to 0, clearly will equal ZL, meaning the impedance of the load. But the minute you start moving away from this load, uh, that impedance will actually change. It will not be equal to ZL anymore. And that's crucial because now you can see that it's possible to start getting very different impedances than the one we actually use to terminate our line. And it doesn't take much to change that impedance. It's not like we have to move a few miles away from the load. In fact, it all changes, as we're going to see in a minute, as a function of beta L which is 2 pi by lambda times L. So as you can see, uh, there are essentially two uh, critical parameters. The physical length, which is right here. So basically how many centimeters or how many millimeters or how many micrometers away you are from the load. But it also depends on lambda, which is the wavelength. So the key is not how many centimeters or millimeters away you are from the load, but how many degrees you are away from the load. And this beta L is actually called the electrical length. So when you're changing the impedance of a transmission line, when you're moving away from the load, it doesn't matter the physical, it's not important how physically far away you are from the load, but actually how many degrees, what is the electrical length that you're moving away from the load to get that impedance. And as we will see, uh, that can actually change dramatically. In fact, in the next few examples I will do, you will see we can go from a short to an open very, very quickly.